Hello, my friends. Hope your yesterday went decent anyway. And um, are you realizing this is Friday? You know, we used in different times, we'd make a big deal of TGIF and a warmer weekend again and stuff like that. But how's it going? I'm titling this, this is getting long, huh? It's getting long and it's getting tedious, huh? But yet, I want to steer you. Did you happen to notice how beautiful the sunrise was this morning? It was pretty nice, and but that sun is a big ball now and kind of bright when you try to drive east. It's hard to get above it, isn't it? It's getting more and more challenging as time goes on. It's getting long. I was looking at the scripture readings for this Sunday, and I'm planning to read uh, to to do my sermon on doubting Thomas and and lead us into some of those kind of thinkings as as the doubter is set before us again as the second Sunday of Easter always is. But I wanted to just kind of share what I want to share with you um, the passage that's from First Peter one. First Peter was written at a time when life was much was really challenging then too. People were losing hope. They were suffering at, with um, the things that were going on. So First Peter was written to give courage to the people who were going through kind of a long dilemma of things to encourage Christians as they've experienced these hardships and sufferings, they talk about the hope that is made known through Jesus Christ. And how do we keep that hope over 2,000 years later when we're going through a pandemic? Just want to share with you the second reading for this coming Sunday from 1 Peter 1. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy, he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, unfading, kept in heaven for you, who were being protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice. Even if now for a little while you have to suffer various trials so that the genuineness of your faith, being more precious than gold, that though perishable, is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Although you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with an indescribable, glorious joy, for you are receiving the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. I may say, Pastor Joanne, that's just a bunch of pie in the sky, by and by stuff. It's never going to happen or it's taking forever. We have to take the deep breath and look back at how God's promises in the past have got us through some difficult times. Those of you who have had loved ones with some various kinds of infirmities that have lasted their whole life, and yet they have been the most faithful people. We take time to trust that God, yes, is here with us, helping us in our creative abilities to be led into the hope that we know that God has for us, but also gives us every day. I mentioned seeing the sunrise. I mentioned the, uh, the newness of the day and the freshness that is there. Take time to think about our gardeners. Of course, our professional gardeners would be our farmers, but the gardeners that are just getting ready, they just really want some warmer weather in the ground to get warmer so they can plant the seed. We know that that seed is going to come to full bloom and we get to watch the birds and the butterflies and all of those things that give us the hope of spring. The ones that stick with it 
are pretty much the gardeners, aren't they? They they know that that seed is going to come full bloom, and they're going to do everything they can to keep it that way. And we trust that we will be given the appropriate atmosphere for those seeds to grow. We have a God who's planted the seed of faith at our baptism, and we know that that God helps us to continue to grow in faith, to hang in there with it despite all the frustrations and everything that surround homeschooling and, and uh, surround all the things that are, are just having to stay in that house, but with the warmer weather, we were able to get out and do a few more things that are more helpful and encouraging for us, too. Thank you all for your faithfulness, for your willingness to realize, yes, the church is going to get beyond this, may have different ways of, we may have different ways of worshiping and celebrating, but God continues to remain faithful and that we have a lot of good people, the people that give us a call to see how we're doing, hopefully seeing the positives that are going on around us and those people who are doing those little things to help us to have a positive attitude about this time and being thankful, even though how frustrating it is sometimes with the people we're living with, thankful for them and for the ways in which they try to give us the hope that is needed. With that, thank you again for listening and thank you for your positive attitudes with me and with all of our, our ministry together. And I encourage you, if you have an idea of something that you'd like to have me talk about, I'm thinking I'm going to get into the Gather magazine somewhat next week, um, looking at the idea of call. Um, it's... Um, this is the 50th anniversary of the ordination. This year is the 50th anniversary of ordination of women in the Lutheran Church. And I'm going to be sharing a little bit more of that. We were supposed to have Synod Assembly, and that's not happening. And so we were going to, they were going to be planning to highlight that. And so that may have to be on the 51st year. We'll see if hopefully by then we'll be able to feel more relaxed about the pandemic stuff. And Sunday, the plan now is to do live streaming at 9.30 Sunday morning. I know some people have been having trouble with that. Again, I just caution you, if you, if you have trouble catching it, they'll be on YouTube in the next two hours afterwards. So basically around 11.30 or, or probably 12.30 or so, it'd be on, on, live, on the YouTube live, um, instead of the live stream. And we're going to be doing um, a form of a newsletter this coming week, um, just letting you know that those things should be coming to you, along with a stewardship update, a financial stewardship update. And uh, so thank you for that. And let us now turn to our God in prayer. Lord, our God, as we are continuing on with our shutdown with the pandemic, we know that sometimes it seems like we just lose hope. Lord, we know in the midst of the losing of hope, your, your Holy Spirit is alive within us, that we pray that we can realize that is alive, giving us the encouragement to face the new day. Give us a fresh vision of the hope that you have for us through your love. May we again realize that our fears and our thinking that all hope is lost, we realize your powerful deliverance is always present with us. And Lord God, as we are in a new day, you have called us to ventures of which we cannot see the ending by paths as yet untrodden, through perils that are unknown. Give us faith to go out with good courage, not knowing where we go but we know that your hand is always leading us and guiding us, your love always supporting us. Eternal God, also we, as we are amid the toils and changes of your world, we know that your love is steadfast, your strength never fails us. As we live in this time of danger and trouble, be our sure guardian, our rock of defense, 
Guide the leaders of our nation with your web wisdom. Comfort those who are in distress. Grant us courage and hope as we face the future, knowing that you're always walking with us, leading us and guiding us in all your ways. We pray for our medical professionals. We thank you for them and all that they are doing to help us along the way, to give us the courage to know that they are working on a way for us to be able to live in the midst of the dangers of the pandemic, but help us to stay safe in our lockdown situations that we do not lose sight of that they know what they are doing and want us to realize that we just need to do this to keep us safe for now. We pray for all of our uh, religious leaders. We pray that you will continue to guide and lead and walk with them. We pray that you will help us all to have courage to face the day, whether it be outside, inside, maybe with people walking by and waving at us. Sometimes that just can be the lift we need also. And now, Lord, all these things, may your healing power surround us and give us anything else that we are in desperate need of. We pray all of this through your Son, Jesus, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Again, thank you for your time and plan to do this YouTube with you again on Monday. Uh, please turn in for Sunday uh, for the live stream if you can and we will keep in touch one way or another by phone, email, YouTube, whatever. Thank you so much. May your day be blessed.